Uh, let's begin. Uh, it's 7.05. We'll open the monthly meeting of the Arlington Housing Authority. It's our regular board meeting, Thursday, June 16th, uh, 2022. And it's, uh, again, it's 7.05. So we'll do a call to order. Uh, Joanne? You're on mute. Did you call me? Uh, hold on, Nick. You in? He couldn't hold his door for you. He couldn't do any fine wonderful. And she's like, Are you can't hear you. I don't know. I don't know. I can't do anything. You in? Present. I found out. I'm there you go. Yeah, turn your volume up a little bit. Uh, Joanne's here. Nick, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Brian's here. Gar is absent. Um, and Fiorella is, um, is also absent. Hopefully, she'll join us shortly. Um, so we move to the executive director's report. Thank you. So just uh, not not really any news on the on the subject of the fire over at Chestnut Manor and some of the, the work that's happening over there. Um, they're continuing to plug along, but we do not have a, a definitive date yet as far as when the units will be available um, as for, you know, when we'll be able to hopefully invite all of you to, to come and take a look at, you know, how they turn out. So um, hopefully more news to follow, um, maybe in the next, in the fall, in the upcoming months. Um, there, also, there's a number of different projects that we have in the queue right now. We have an electrical panel project up in the Hauser Building, electrical panel project at, at Chestnut Manor, in addition to fire alarm projects at the, the cottages, at the Hauser Building, um, as well as some other projects that are also in the queue. And, and um, so right now, we're, we're in the design phase for many, some are in the plan, planning phase, and we hope to be in the design phase soon, but um, it, it, it shows that, you know, we have a quite a few, a few good things coming, and hopefully get those out to bid and um, get those projects started maybe in the late summer and the fall, depending upon the scope and size. Um, additionally, with, in regards to um, the, the, so we had talked about air source heat pumps and some additional work that might be able to, we might be able to get for free at Chestnut Manor and Winslow Towers. Um, we're still waiting for official word from New Ecology and ABCD re related to that. And so hopefully maybe at the next meeting, I'll have a definitive answer either way for both of those buildings. Um, in regards to the chapter 689 development, uh, we did meet, um, Brian and myself met with the state to discuss different options and the pathway forward. And then I met with the town, uh, town managers and some of the other uh, key staff over there uh, to discuss some different options um, that may be available. Um, we're still in talks with the state as well, as far as the legality of some of the different options that exist. So. Um, without getting into further details at this point, um, I hope to have some more details and more information relative to some pathways forward at the next meeting. In regards to state ARPA, um, at, at the last meeting, I believe we, we voted on the additional year of formula funding state ARPA, uh, but we're still waiting for news on the targeted ARPA awards. We have a number of projects that I think are um, put us in a key position to hopefully take advantage of some of those targeted awards. Um, hopefully, We'll get some news soon. Um, once we do, we'll we'll send an update out and hopefully get it on the next agenda to accept all those funds. The Council on Aging um, touched base with us this over the past week and, and officially notified us that town meeting had approved um, the six hundred thousand dollars for the Minotti Manor Window Project and the two hundred thousand dollars for the Hauser Building Electric Panel Project. And we're very grateful to. Town meeting as well as the council. And as I said council on aging. I apologize. <laughs> the CPA committee. Um, and then also, I did want to update you. I know it was a little bit in the air as far as the climate readiness program grant application that we were hoping to submit, but we weren't sure on if we qualified. We were able to straighten that out, and we did submit that application for the as part of our um, project out of Minotti Manor with the window um, window replacement and some hopefully some other additional deep energy retrofit related components. So we, we hope to get more news on that in, in the coming months relative to what we qualify for and, and hopefully um, get some additional funding from that source. Um, also, another update, we did update our phone line, our phone lines, our phone service for the Hollington Housing Authority. Uh, we're using Metropolitan Telephone and the, the switch went effective today. The only major difference for the residents is that now there's a, an additional digit at the end of their normal 
extensions that they dial. For extension, for example, if they were dialing the front desk and they wanted to reach the extension right away, they would dial 110 instead of 11. Um, however, we did the prompts are different now when you dial the main number, so you don't have to worry about knowing the extension or you know hitting that extension right away. You could just use the prompts to, to access the appropriate party as well. Uh, but we did send out notifications to residents um, just to make sure that they, they understand the change as well. And we'll be posting, if they haven't been posted, they'll be posted um, first thing tomorrow um, related to this updated staff contacts. Also, they, we, <clears throat> we held some meet and greets at the senior developments this month um, in order to help our residents meet the, the new assistant executive director. It was also an opportunity for them to ones who maybe didn't know me or know me very well, and, or the director of maintenance modernization, Chris Partridge, um, to introduce ourselves to those residents and, um, and talk to them about some of the different things we have planned and, and also um, listen to them and, and talk to them and, and, and ensure that they understand who we are and what we do at the Housing Authority and the chain of command. Additionally, uh, there was a meeting relative to budget buddies, which we've talked about at some of the previous meetings, a new program that's going to be available to uh, to women. Um, it's a financial program that helps provide coaching and, and other means to, to help them to help women um, with, with that, those types of aspects. The Minnehaha Manor residents that attended were able to meet the new assistant executive director as well. Um, and we've already had one resident that's enrolled and, and we're hopeful that others will be enrolling up in the in the rolling basis over the coming months. It's not a cohort, so when residents do want to enroll, they can just notify our resident services coordinator and get, and get set up. Additionally, um, a little free library was installed at the life in front of the Life and Skills Center. Uh, the property manager down there, Lynn Sullivan, did a great job working with a student at Winchester Public Schools to make that happen. And Trisha Horgan also brought in a, a program called Plants for the Purpose uh, for our residents that it's a, it's a therapeutic program that provides them plants um, as a means of you know, providing them that additional comfort. Additionally, uh, the Girl Scouts planted five trees at Winslow Towers this past month. Joanne Preston was able to coordinate the donation and wrote a really nice article in your Arlington. If you haven't checked it out, um, you can read it there. Uh, but we're very grateful to the Girl Scouts and they plan on coming back, uh, I think sometime in the fall to hold a meeting. So it was, it was a great event. Uh, myself and my family was there, Chris Partridge was there, and, and Myra Cruz, the assistant executive director, was there with her family, uh, as well as some other staff, Trisha Morgan and others. Um, additionally, I did want to update you that we have a number of job postings open. Uh, we have a property manager position, certification specialist position, the FSS coordinator position is still open, and we have a resident services coordinator position open. And that, that resident services coordinator position is, is being funded through the town ARPA that we received. Um, we have been impressed with the quality of applicants so far and, and are looking forward to getting those key positions filled. And that's all. Great. Any um, questions for Jack? Oh, Ryan? Did you raise your hand, Joanne? Yes. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Just no, I just, for my own information, I just want to ask Jack, how many units at um, were damaged by the fire in Chestnut Manor and how many are you repairing, which will be available in the future? 18. Mm -hmm. Sorry, how many? Eight, 18 units. 18 units? For... Yeah, oh. mostly water damage, I think, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was mostly water damage, like Brian said. Yeah, yeah. be good when they get back online. Yeah. Right. And, I, and I can assume that they're all being repainted and cleaned up and yeah, they're going to be brand new kitchens, um, new floors. I mean, they're going to be um, all, all the drywall got taken out. So they're going to be a really nice, nice new units for the residents um, that do end up moving in there. Yeah. So it's major, major work, major work. Say so is the estimated date of completion. Say that again, Brian. When did you say is the estimated date of completion for that? We don't have a date right now, but my my date with the state, kind of like a worst case scenario, or what I hope is a worst case scenario, would be January of next year. Oh, that long, huh? That's because that's a that's my I put in um, waivers for the units for a year just to be safe. Um, but 
initially they, they thought maybe even six to nine months, but I mean, I'm, with all the different supply and cha supply chain related issues, I'm not sure how, how it's going to end up. Um, yeah. You know. yeah, it's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Um, any other questions, Joanne? Yeah. Oh. Okay, we move on to number four, approval of the no trespass policy. Joanne and I uh, had a discussion with us today and we agree that we should have a non-solicitation policy, but as I read the trespass policy, I understand the angle of the trespass policy. The trespass policy is just specific to trespass and you wouldn't integrate a no solicitation. So my question, Jack, is, and I thought I read it on some of the high rises, do we already have a non-solicitation policy in place? We don't have an official no solicitation policy in place. Um, it, it might might be part of our procedures and guidance that we provide, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a, not an official policy. So do we, uh, and John Greco, do we, do we need one or can we just post it? I mean, obviously we don't want people selling magazines to bang on every button at the in some of the towers and go to every door down in the manor and things like that. So we probably should have one. Take an official vote, John. Do we need to have an official document or, or what do you, what I, you I think? I think that if we want to make it a, a very specific or very stringent even, we probably need to have a vote on it. There are a number of things we probably want to, want to take into consideration. Number one, there may be residents who want uh, that solicitation. There may be people who are members of a particular religious group that, that go from place to place, other, other, other developments and do solicitation like that. So we want to be careful not to run, run afoul of any uh, uh, religious uh, restrictions that uh, would be prohibitive. Uh, and we also want to make sure we don't run afoul of something that residents might want, uh, people coming door to door. I, I don't know. So I think that if we're going to make it really restrictive, uh, we probably want to um, run it by residents too to see if we've missed anything that might Im impede uh, you know, what they consider their quality of life. So rather than, that's a good point. So rather than a, a black and white policy that says, no, maybe we adopt a policy that says, you know, if, you, if you're if you somebody that wants to solicit, you need to call the office, register, get approved, got to be approved by the board um, before you can do that. Um, I, I know Pam just typed in that we do have a sign on Winslow Towers that says no solicitation. That may be more applicable to the management office, but um, what what are some thoughts here? Jack, what's your thought on that? I think it's worth discussion. Um, I think, you know, John Greco brings up some some great points. And I think at the end of the day, you know, involving the residents is always a, a great, a great step forward to understand, you know, how to, how to move forward. But I think like you indicated, some sort of a registration process, there could be some benefits to that and, and ensuring that we understand everybody who's coming there and um, so that we can interject yeah. if necessary. So why don't we do this on that particular, and then we'll go to this one. Why don't you, when, in your next round of meetings with the various LTO presidents, why don't you chat with them and see, A, is it a problem? They be, is there people soliciting okay. facilities? And, and see, get some feedback from them and then put it on for the next agenda. Uh, and we can, we can vote and come up with something, whether A, whether we need it, or B, do we make it open in registration, or do we just make it a blanket no? So uh, th that'll... They'll move forward on that one since it's not on our agenda here. Uh, so this no trespass policy, um, I, I read it. I think it's pretty uh, inclusive. I think it makes sense in, in for all uh, on the board. The, the need of this one is in reference to um, uh, visitors of tenants that shouldn't be there anymore and things of that magnitude. It's more specific to tenants and, and visitors and, and uh, things of that magnitude versus solicitors. So anybody have any questions on this on the policy that we sent out? Joanne? Are, are we going to put up a sign so that people know? Um, I, I think this, um, this is more of an individual policy. So for instance, you wouldn't put a sign that says don't trespass. This would be if, if, uh, if a boyfriend is, is on the property and, we've, and he's not supposed to be anymore. The property manager would issue that boyfriend a uh, a writ of no trespass, a document saying you're forbidden from the property. So it's more individualistic. Um, unless Jack, you felt that you should put some type of a generic no trespass sign. I I mean, it doesn't bother me. What what is your thought on that? I think it should be individually based, um, and I think it's this just provides us another tool 
uh, tr to try to address some some dangerous or, or other other behavior that might interfere with the, the quiet enjoyment of the residents of the various developments. Um, I'd obviously be working with John Greco um, just to ensure we pro provide the proper notification that goes along with this this right. policy. Um, but I think this policy is a, is a step forward and, and shows the uh, not only the police department that we are serious and um, and that we want to you know we want to yeah. work, work towards ways to keep our property safe. Okay. Yes. When? Yeah. Um, yes, I happen to know someone who actually jogs through Monotony Manor, who's not a danger to anybody. <laughs> so. Um, on the yeah, tree, this is a. On the this tree, is a, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. But um, I think always with these, you want to give people some warning that this is what is coming. Is it possible to let the residents know that there is this policy? Someone just texted me. Yeah, but but let's let's Jack correct me if I'm wrong. This is not a policy that say that says nobody can come on our properties. That's this, correct. It's not. This is a yeah. This, so this is not a, a blanket policy that says you can't trespass on the property. This is an individualistic policy that if we have a, a tenant who we've evicted or a, or a friend or a, a relative of a tenant who uh, had an issue and we've asked to leave, this is, a, this is a policy that we would serve them with a writ of trespass saying, you, you Mr. Jones, cannot come on the property here. So it's not, so your friend can still jog monotony and people can still walk around the, you know, Drake Village and go to the, the walk up there. So um, it's not, individual order yeah. of no trespass. But I think since we're putting it in because we think there's some problem or whatever, I think people, the residents ought to be, this is a reminder, you should say, that there is this trespass policy. Be sure if you have guests here, you're responsible for their behavior. I think that's one thing. Um, I always think it's more effective if they know now that we are enforcing this if there is disruptive behavior if they know yeah. ahead of time they may stop and then we yeah. don't have to so maybe in the president's meetings you know obviously go over this um yeah. and let them know that hey if there is a visitor if, if we have a tenant that's a, a person that keeps on banging on their door and to get in that they don't want we can take action against that person we can do it before, you know, and we can do it immediately. So somehow maybe you want to bring that across to them. Um, I don't know if this is something you want to put in every door because uh, it's more of an individual one, but um, perhaps, Jack, you guys can figure out how to get the word out and explain it because we, we don't want the word to go that you can't cut through Drake Village to go walk around the reservoir anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's... it's uh, is that, is that good enough to win? That's fine. Right. So, so, so do we have a motion to accept this uh, number four? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Looks like you two are going to have to work hard tonight. So uh, all, all in favor, Joanne? Um, yes. Nick? Yes. Brian's a yes. So we move on to the number five uh, amendment to the air policy. This is put in at the request, uh, as I mentioned last meeting, we had uh, a tenant to ask for this. I thought it was made sense. Jack amended it. Any need for discussion on it? Yeah, so we, we had a resident that had requested um, an item be, at, well, item be added to the agenda for consideration by the board. And it was relative to, you know, with climate change and the the extension of the summer into past September into October now, um, the hot weather that the board would consider um, extending the um, the time in which residents can keep the air conditioner units in their in their windows until the end of October. Yep. And so we made that that adjustment to the policy, and um, so that the board could um, could consider that and, and, and vote on it if they if they um, so need fit. Any questions on that? Or do we have a motion to accept that number five? So move. So move. Makes sense. Yep. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. 
Brian's a yes. Uh, now we move on to number six. Um, approval of the tree donations from the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, Jack, this is what you reported on, right? No, this is um, this is something different. But uh, Joanne, I don't okay. know if you'd like to maybe speak to this as well. We had we had um, spoken with a um, a member of the um, of the tree committee this this past month um, about the potential donations at over the next coming months. Um, I think at Drake Village and then at also at Cusack Terrace. Um, yeah. And and we had determined that the previous vote didn't as it may may not have included uh, those different sites. So we wanted to ensure that. This be added to the agenda so the, the board could uh, make a sure. motion to approve uh, future donations by the tree committee at our, our various developments. So why don't we, um, Joanne, you want to make that into a form yes, of a motion? I get a motion. Um, I move that the um, board accept um, tree donations from the Arlington Tree Committee. Do I have to say where? The Cusack no. and, and Drake Village. And where else on Arlington Housing Authority property it may be deemed um, beneficial. Yes. Yeah. And do, do you want to add that this could be at any time um, uh, and any as um, in coordination with Jack? So we do it every time. So, for instance, if they want to go back two months and now, we don't need to take a vote, we'll just take the trees, right? Yes, yes. And they. Okay. Plant in the spring and then the fall. Yep, great. So do we have a second on that motion? Second, nice job, Joanne. All right, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Brian's a yes. And thank you, Joanne, for, for pushing that, quoting, that, uh, making that happen. Uh, number I seven. Yep. Okay. I just want to say, I looked at the ones at Chestnut Manor. Now it's two years, they really look lovely. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Boring. And I do want to add that the the article in the paper oh, was it online? Excuse me. Uh, Joanne wrote an article online about the donation that Jack mentioned. It was a, a very nice article, and it was a great, uh, great positive thing for the for the Girl Scouts. So thank you, and a shout out to them as well. Uh, number seven: approval of the increase in the maintenance on call weekly rate. Jack. Yes. So um, so I I did want to. I've included a letter in, in with this packet just to give you some brief description on um, the work that myself and the director of maintenance modernization, Chris Patridge, did um, to look into this and determine um, whether an increase was warranted and, and what type of increase we wanted to propose to the board. So what we did is we looked at you know when the, the most recent increase was made to the, the maintenance on-call rate, uh, which was in 2016, and then the ones that happened previous, which was uh, prior to 2010. Um, around prior to 2010, the on-call rate was $100, and then in 2016, the rate increased um, to $125. We also surveyed some of the other housing some housing authorities of similar size in the area, and, and to determine what their rates were and, and whether we were uh, competitive with them. And we determined that um, that there were there was um, at least one with 200 and and others around that around that size around that rate. Um, so what we determined is that two hundred dollar rate would would make the Arlington Housing Authority a competitive housing authority and allow us to ensure that we're able to maintain um, our our maintenance staff. We've been very pleased with the work that they've been doing. If any of you have been in our buildings lately, you'd, you'd notice that um, it's they're the cleanest they've ever been. The grounds are in great shape, um, and and they've been doing a great job uh, responding to calls. So we. We feel that this rate will um, definitely put us in a position to continue to, to keep these uh, these staff members and, and hopefully continue to recruit um, good staff members moving forward. And it's effective October, October 1st, 2022. So we would need to um, budget for it in the next fiscal year. Right. Okay. Um, any questions? Jack, it's Nick. What's the current rate? $125. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so moved. Go ahead. And then that's the rate for them to carry the um, the on call phone for the entire okay. week. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, do we have a second? Move by Nick. Second by Joanne. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor, Joanne. Yes. Nick. Yes. Brian is a yes. Um, now we move on to number eight. 
approval of certificate of substantial completion for the roof replacement project at Cusack Towers. Jack? So this, this project has been completed for some time. It just sometimes takes uh, time for the, the architect and the various other entities to get the paperwork submitted. Um, so at this point, the, um, the closeout procedures have happened in this project. Uh, the checklist has been completed and we just need to submit the certificate of substantial completion so we can uh, release the retainage to the, uh, to the contractor. Great. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Joanne? Second. All in favor, uh, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Brian is a yes. Number nine, approval of Nagel, Nagel Engineering Inc. Design of Services contract, the amount of $25,665 for the Hauser Building Electrical Upgrade. So is, no, this no. Cousin, is, this, is this your cousin, Jack? <laughs> no, I can't say that. No, no relation. No relation. Yeah. Question? Are these no. to repair Replace, any potentially right? dangerous electrical panels? To these are the old ones. Jack, you want to pipe yeah. in? On these, are, these are the Federal Pacific electrical panels at, um, at the Hauser building that we want to get replaced. Yes. So this is um, this is just the next step in the in that project. We're getting we're getting a designer um, so that they can start designing the you know designing the projects, and then hopefully we can get out to bid fairly fairly soon, as soon as possible. So yeah. do we have a motion for that? Nick, so move, so move. Second, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Yeah, Nick. Yes. Brian's a yes. We move on to number 10. And we had, we had requested some emergency reserve funding through the state uh, to help uh, fund the electrical panel upgrade at the Hauser building. Um, we, we also got some, some CPA funding for that as well. We had initially, the, the, this, the, the cost estimate through the state initially was about $200,000, but then they indicated once, once the actual electrical engineer took a look at it, um, he determined that it was closer to 400,000. Um, so we're very happy to, to get this additional $200,000 um, so that it will help us move forward with this project. That's huge. That's huge. Do we have a motion to accept that money? Yes, I can make a motion to accept that money. Second by Nick. All yep. right, all, job, all, Jack. all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Brian's a yes. Uh, number 11, approval of the regular minute meetings. I don't know if you've taken a look at them. Sandy, you did a great job. Um, yes, notice we changed the little format so she doesn't have to get every word. And she's put, documented on the minutes the time period of the discussions for the various items. So um, uh, Jack is posting on our website the link to the cable TV. I noticed you here today recording. Um, either, and I don't think they've recorded from January on, but we did. Is that correct, Jack? They, I, I think they have recordings from January through March. And then okay. um, I didn't see recordings from them for March or uh, for April or May. So we posted those uh, recordings to our website. We took from our, um, from our recording. Yeah, we took our recording. We posted it yeah. to our website. Okay, great. So either way, um, we will have a, a recording on our website linked either through Jack or through cable. Jack will coordinate that. So the minutes now, if anybody has a question, they'll go back and listen. They can go to that time period on the minutes and, and hit the discussion. Go ahead, Joanne. No, just on the minutes that we're approving now. Yep. I just, um, there's a section at the end, I'm sorry, I don't have the right one in front of me, in which it said that I discussed um, fencing for the gardens. But I would just like it more explicit that people are allowed to have fences on their legitimate around their legitimate gardens. Yeah. Now that, remember that would have gone out in the public that yes. Jack yeah, distributed. Yeah, but it's not everybody. Minute. Yeah. So all the tenants know that you can put a fence around the garden. Yeah. Uh, but in that particular case, if somebody has a question, they can go back to the recording into that section. Well, um, <laughs> I like things. Little, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a just to add that. Yeah. The, and then we can approve them. Is okay, so why don't I, we? 
So your motion, your motion is to add that into the minutes and then we'll approve it. Is that, did I yeah. hear that right? Yes. Okay. That's fine. Um, Nick, any comments? No, I'm good. No, they look good to me. So do we have a motion to approve them as amended? I make a motion to approve them as amended. Second. Great. Okay, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. And Brian's a yes. We move to public participation LTO presidents. Uh, Pam Hauser. Pam's. Oh, she's here. Yep, she's here. Yes, I'm here. Pam okay. Um, yes, I first of all, July 6th, we are having an ice cream social. Nice. We've charged ten it's a dollar, only so we can get a count. And I want to wish, I wish to thank Jack Nagel for letting me make this statement that I'm going to be making. Uh -oh. For the past 10 years, I have served as president of Winslow Towers Tenants Association. After a horrible health year of health last year, I, it is with a very heavy heart that I am stepping down as president. I wish to thank the Board of Commissioners for all the council and support that they have given me through over the years. I also wish to avail that I am still available and will be attending the meetings if you wish to consult with me in any manner in this way. The AHA will always have a complete support, not only for the House Housing Authority Board, but for the Housing Authority itself in the coming years. Again, I wish to thank everybody for all their help and everything they've given me. But after the year of health I had with pneumonia and two heart attacks, I have to think of my health right now and get that back on track. But I wish to thank everybody. Well, let me just respond on behalf of all of us and, and a very felt thank you for all your years of service. And I know in all my years on this board, you've been the leader down there. You've done a phenomenal job. Um, and you've really Metropolis. You've done a great job keeping the spirit and keeping tenants um, um, down there and notified of anything and everything. Thing. Uh, you've put your whole heart into it, and we really want to uh, offer our extreme appreciation for all that. Um, yeah, Pam. Yeah, Pam. Thank you. I've been on the board for twenty years, and you've always been there. You support yeah. the right people. You've been very professional. Uh, you bring issues to the table the right way, and you get things done. So, yeah. Pam, thank you, and uh, stay safe and get healthy, yeah. man. So, and, and we're here for you. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, so. I'm, I'm hoping after a few years of getting my health back, I'll run again and be harassing you people all over again. We look forward to it. We welcome you we back. Uh, thank, thank you for that. And um, and hopefully you've got somebody in the pipeline who can step forward down there. But uh, we'll- Yes, I do. Great, Jack, we'll talk with you yes. off and help coordinate those elections and so forth, if we need to. Um, um, I uh, Jack, help me out here. Let's see. Um, Jen, Jen Hernandez. I see Lillian, so it's that email account. Bear with me. Okay, all set. Here we go. Go ahead, Jen. Thank you. Um, first of all, Pam Hauser, we wish you the best of health. Um, and hope that you come back to sit with us and be the president again. Um, and Joanne, thank you for the tomato plants um, that were donated for bringing them down this past weekend. We appreciate it very much. Um, not too much to talk about tonight. As, well, a couple things. Um, we're having a, something next weekend. It's probably gonna be a movie night um, with um, refreshments, either popcorn and slush or popcorn and snow cones uh, for the kids for uh, the end of the school year. And um, we look forward to working with the Housing Authority on bringing back the National Night Out and uh, the meeting that we have uh, next week. And that will be in August, I believe. If it all goes as planned. Um, and that's about it for now. So Jen, how are you able to have your tenant meetings? Are you having good participation or is it <clears throat> No, it hasn't. Um, we've had a few so far and there it's, it's, you know, not great participation by any means. We're going to probably try and go to zoom, um, and, you know, do, I'll probably do, um, an in-person, but have it on zoom as well and see if we can get the numbers up. 
because mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, you know, everybody's interested in what's going on, but getting them to come to the meetings and it's been very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But we're trying, we don't give up. Yeah. Well, if we can help out with that, um, certainly let us know, let the staff know with Myra, of course, is, is available for all that now. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. I'll probably just maybe need some uh, direction on how to set up a Zoom or something. I haven't done yep. that yet. Yep, we can still help you. Great, thank so, you so much. Um, Jack, Chestnut have a new president? Yes, yep. Um, yes, Jane, Jane Brennan um, is the new president. She just got voted in maybe within the last week or so. Yep. Have you had the opportunity to sit with her? And Probably not. You just got we, we we sat with her briefly um, this this past week, um, but we're going to talk more with her next week at our scheduled meeting. Okay, so you can is she, we should be able to come on to our meetings like this. She may, uh, you know what, uh, and I'll talk. I think there's at least members of that that tenant association that would be able to fill that role. Yeah. Um. So we'll 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 talk more about that yeah. as well. Oh, good. All right. Um. And I see Ellen Lay on. And Ellen has spoken for. Um, chestnut in the past. Um, Ellen, are you going to chat with us about Chestnut or are you just listening? I'm actually just listening. Thank okay. you. All right. I do have a question though. Um, in terms of the agenda items, you know, various things, I was curious to actually see prior to the meeting so that I had, you know, more information and, you know, could ask questions, for example. Um, is there a way, like, for example, just like the air conditioner policy, that's a simple one, or the executive director's report, like are, are these posted somewhere that we would have access so that we could view them anytime or specifically prior to this kind of meeting so that we you know, be more informed and be able to ask questions or clarify things? Yeah, I mean, the way we, we've changed the public, policy, uh, public participation is these are the agendas posted Thursday before the meeting. So you've got almost a full week to look at it and, and you go online, you'll see the agenda. And if you want to address the board and you fill out the form online there, there's a, there's a link to it yeah. and put down what you, what you want to address. So for instance, if, you know, in that same thing, I mean, if you just uh, want to see the air policy, then Jack could just email you the air conditioner policy. Because a lot of this stuff isn't posted before the, the stuff beyond the agenda is not posted before the okay. meeting. Will, will, will those things then be posted later um, for, for anyone to see? Um, is that something that, that is then available to residents to see? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then, right. I mean, a lot of them are simple things. It's like, it's like you're hearing the English policy. We added a month to it, you know? So I'm, I'm sure a lot of your questions uh, would probably be answered just with the email request, but, mm -hmm. uh, but that's how you do it. So, and what we've asked is the presidents concentrate more on tenant activities. So uh, to report the activities of the association and, and things like that, because we've changed, as you probably know, we changed the format that Jack and the management now go out to each building after right. this meeting and, and deal with very specific maintenance issues like that, which seems to be working great. So, Is the QSAC one this coming Friday or a week from tomorrow? A week from tomorrow. <laughs> week from tomorrow for the president's meeting yep. Yep. and and can i just ask you a quick question well are we yep. are we having our i know it was postponed with covid but you know like our summer barbecue which isn't really quite a barbecue but <laughs> um i mean we could have it outside we normally have it inside so just wondering if there's been any update on that we're looking at september yeah september yep we do them in the fall yep okay thank you all right, uh, Jack, do we have any requests? We didn't from general public, right? No. Okay. Um, and that's all we have for tonight. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, um, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Brian's a yes, and we have 10 attendees of which looks like half are employees. Um, <laughs> Presidents, more than half employees and presidents. So uh, thank you for dialing on, and we'll see you next month. Next Thanks, month, guys. Thursday. Uh, so it's our last Thursday, and then we'll go back to Wednesdays. Thanks. All right. Thanks, weekend. folks. See you. Bye now.